Welcome to this video on the electrochemistry topic on the theme of cell shorthand notation. So what we want to try and do here is summarize the parts of a cell uh, using a shorthand convention and we're going to call that a cell diagram. And secondly we want to try and interpret these cell diagrams that are drawn using this shorthand. So representing the zinc copper cell. So we could represent it by name, just call it the zinc copper cell. Disadvantage of that is it's ambiguous. We don't know what the oxidation states of zinc and copper are um, in the cell, and we don't know wh which half cell is going to be positive or negative, and so forth. So we don't want to do that. Alternative, we can draw a picture. Um, now this is good because it shows, as long as you label it here with the fact that we've got zinc 2 plus in there, and this one here will have copper 2 plus, um, which substances are involved in the half cells, um, and it does show the connectivity of the cell. However, the disadvantage of this is really that a real cell based on this chemistry may look very, very different to this. And also, uh, it's got a lot of technical details in that are perhaps irrelevant to the actual chemistry that's happening. A much better way to do it is to look at the redox equilibria that are actually involved. So here we've got these two equations, but even here there is some superfluous material. So all of them are equilibria, so we don't really need to put the equilibrium signs in, a reversible reaction sign rather, and all of them are going to involve some electron transfer. Um, and if you know that it's copper 2 plus and copper, then you can deduce that it's going to be two electrons. If you know it's zinc 2 plus and zinc, you know it's going to be two electrons. So those are superfluous. So really all we need is the species involved in the two half cells and some way of arranging these to show which is the more positive and which is the more negative of the two half cells. So here's how that works. We, for each half cell, so I'll just do the half cells first, half cells, this one is going to be written as uh, zinc and zinc 2 plus. And it's important to put the state symbols in. Now this uh, vertical line here is a phase boundary. So because we've got some solid and an aqueous substance there, we just need to put a vertical line in to show that there's a phase boundary between them. So that's all you need. If you're going to refer to this half cell, you can refer to it that way. So very similar for copper. You might want to pause the video and just write it down for copper. Here it is. So copper solid and copper 2 plus. Aqueous separated again by the vertical line. Now what about if we're actually doing the actual cell? Well, we need some way of representing the salt bridge between them, so we're going to put the two vertical lines here to represent the salt bridge. And then we follow the convention that we put the species in the half cell with the most, the highest, most positive oxidation state closest to the salt bridge. So I'm going to follow that convention here. Zinc 2 plus is the more positive oxidation state and zinc there and similarly this time copper 2 plus I'll need to flip that half cell around in order to show it that way. Now why have I decided to show it that way rather than putting the zinc on the right hand side? Well it's pure convention is simply the fact that we tend to put the more positive half cell on the right hand side. So not to say that every diagram you'll see will be like that, but that tends to be the convention that is applied. So this is now thinking about half cells involving multiple phases. So this is the standard hydrogen electrode uh, here. This one here is the standard hydrogen electrode. And this is a piece of zinc undergoing zinc 2 plus in there undergoing the following redox equilibrium. So what's the heart, the cell diagram for this? We're well, going to start with the salt bridge. Zinc 2 plus is a higher oxidation state than just zinc metal. So we write it like that. And this time, what's involved here? Well, it's H plus ions. 
and hydrogen gas. Again, this is the higher oxidation state. So we put in 2H plus phase boundary to the hydrogen gas. And then we've also got here, remember, a piece of platinum wire and that's involved in the half cell even though it's inert and it's a separate phase to the hydrogen gas and so we put platinum on there. Now those of you who are familiar with the actual values of the cell potentials might be thinking well that's a bit of a strange way to write it because zinc is actually uh, it has a standard value of minus 0 0.76 volts and so really this should be the opposite way around you say. Good point, but in this case, the standard hydrogen electrode always goes on the left. So that's a really, really important thing just to note, is that the standard hydrogen electrode always on the left. Now, if you think about it carefully, it has to always be on the same side, otherwise you would never measure a negative potential for anything um, and so you'd be not ordering your redox equilibria correctly if you change the side the standard hydrogen electrode was on such that the cell potential for that particular cell was positive for every other cell the cell potential will be positive but in this case you can have negative cell potentials um, for the standard hydrogen electrode because it's always on the left hand side What about if you have multiple species in the same phase? So this here is a zinc carbon cell. So as it's a conventional cell, we're going to have to work out what's positive and what's negative. And we can find out here that the positive is going to be involving the manganese and the negative is going to be involving the zinc. So we can write this out using the convention. So I'll just pop the salt bridge in first and I'll just start with the zinc, I'll just take the negative pole as being, i just do it in blue just to highlight it. So the negative one is coming on the left, so zinc 2 plus aqueous and zinc solid there. And then I'll use red to show the right hand cell. Now the higher oxidation state here is the manganese dioxide, MnO2 solid. And that is in equilibrium with a lower oxidation state form which is this um, manganese uh, oxide and manganese 3 oxide um, but these are in the same phase they're both solids and so what we do to separate them is just putting a comma the Mn2O3 solid separated by commas um, we've got some other species to worry about here we've got a water which is a liquid now usually we'd probably leave water out because water is present um, just purely for the balancing of the atoms. So we'll leave the water out, um, but we can put the 2NH3, 2NH4Cl, and the 2Cl minuses, which are all aqueous on here like so. And um, in a zinc carbon cell, it is actually a carbon electrode that is used here. And so we're going to put a solid bit of graphite in there to show it. So that's a much more complicated example. But the key thing to remember here when we're doing this is that commas separates species in the same phase. Okay, an example for you to try from this time from the equations to the cell diagram. So have a read of that question and try and see if you can draw the cell diagram. Okay, let's see how you got on. So salt bridge down the middle um, as normal. And then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to need to have uh, we'll start off with the positive pole, which I'm going to do in red. Uh, so the more positive one here is involving the bromine, 
And so we need the highest oxidation state closest to the centre, which is going to be the Br2. 2 Br- is in the same phase, so we construct it as so. Platinum is an inert electrode as necessary, so we put platinum on here. Now we can do the negative electrode, which we're going to do in blue. So again, the highest oxidation state in the centre, Cr3+. And then the chromium comes on the outside. That's already a conductor, and so this is the final cell diagram. Another example for you to try, this time going from the cell diagram to the equation. So uh, have a read of that and pause the video and see if you can work out the various equations. OK, so here we can see that by convention we would have the positive electrode on the right hand side and the negative electrode on the left hand side. So if we then have a think about actually what the equations are that are happening then we've got we want to try and write these with the reduction going from left to right and so if we think about that that's essentially just going to be uh, for the right hand electrode chlorine is in the zero oxidation state chloride is in the minus one so that does involve gaining electrons so we can write Cl2 plus two electrons goes to two Cl minus. Remember the platinum is simply uh, an inert uh, metal for carrying the electrons away. And then in the case of the negative electrode, we're in this case to gain an electron is actually going to be going from the inside to the outside. In fact, it's always going to be that way. Ti3 plus aqueous. So I'll just rewrite that. Ti3 plus aqueous plus an electron goes to Ti2+, plus, also aqueous. OK, I hope this video has helped you to uh, produce and interpret cell diagrams.